Welcome back! Let's talk about Japanese demons. Japanese demons or yonkai are continuously seen throughout Japanese folklore, but that isn't the only place you'll see Japanese demons. Even today, strange demons are seen in popularized animes like Yu Hakusho, Jujutsu Kaisen, or even uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba. But today, we're throwing all that to the side because we're looking at something far more weird, far more interesting. These are the five weirdest Japanese yonkai I've ever seen. At number five, we have Nuri Botoke. Now this. Is this motherfucker wearing blackface? This creature gets its name from its appearance. Nuri Botoke translates to painted Buddha. Now, I don't think this looks like Buddha, but because of its dark skin and rough resemblance to Buddha, that's where the name originally came from. The creature also has weird eyes that seem to dangle out of its eye socket. And it's been said that this creature absolutely stinks. Japanese homes and temples often have a small shrine called a butsudan. Now this small shrine is meant to be open during the day, but at night time must be closed. For if the shrine is not closed, it acts as an otherworldly portal to the spirit realm. If a butsudan is left open at night time, or if a butsudan is poorly maintained, a painted Buddha might sneak into your household. Once the painted Buddha gets into your household, they love to cause all kinds of mischief. Now two of the things they seem to mainly do is one, give false prophecies to those living in the house, and two, dance. The Nuribotoke isn't the most dangerous creature on the list, but it is the most annoying, which is why I'm putting it at number five. I'd rather have my butsudan closed at night time, then have a creature like this sneak in doing the cha-cha slide at 3am. And number 4 we have Tofu Kozo or Tofu Boy. This is another pretty harmless yonkai as all he does is wander the streets on a rainy night trying to deliver a plate of tofu. Tofu Kozo was originally made for advertising purpose and was first seen in the Satsumai province, now modern day Kagoshima. He appeared during the Anai era in a book called the Edo Meisho Zoo which is a collection of famous pictures from the Edo period. It shows tofu dealers carrying their goods from place to place, wearing the exact same outfit that Tofu Kozo also wears. It's theorized that Tofu Boy was actually a mascot of a small tofu shop, but its popularity got away from them and eventually became a part of Japanese folklore. While generally shy and timid, Tofu Boy will occasionally approach humans on the street and even follow them down the road. If he catches your attention, he'll offer you his tofu. Do not eat the tofu. It's said that anyone who eats the tofu that Tofu Boy is carrying will find themselves with a mold growing inside of them and it will grow and grow until they die. Bro, this is fucked up. What the f what the fuck? We're getting to the creepier ones now. Number three, Akaname or Filth Licker. Akaname are small goblin-like creatures and their entire purpose is to lick the filth from the dirtiest places you can find public bathrooms, restrooms, stalls, houses. If your place is disgusting, you're gonna find an Akaname. All Akaname have disgusting long sticky tongues that they use to lap up all the grossest grime, grease and grits that you'll find in any local bathroom near you. Only when an owner has a complete lack of sanitary discipline will the Akaname come to lap up that filth. I hear you cry, but wait Jordan, hold on a flippin' minute. This sounds great, demon comes in, Laps up all the dirt, cleaning's done. No, these things spread diseases. While it appears that the Akaname is doing a pretty good job cleaning up all the filthy areas of your bathroom and or probably kitchen, these things spread mad diseases. And it's said that once in your house, they will not leave until the place is spotless. But as you have a complete lack of sanitary discipline, that will never happen. And slowly, disease will start festering in your house. So keep it clean to avoid the filth liquor. Number two, Shirime, Bamai. <laughs> Either way, it's pretty clear what this yonkai is. It's a demon with an eye where the anus should be. Japan, what are you doing? Apparently all this demon likes to do is walk around town and scare the shit out of people. And I'm not, I'm not here for it. I'm not here for it. There are times where I would be here for something so stupid, but this is, yeah, out. This, you're taking it, you're out, you're taking it too far. This is, this is ridiculous, Japan. Take this shit back. The story goes that a long, long time ago, a samurai was walking down the street in Kyoto. And as he's walking down, he hears someone call his name. Samurai, hey boy, what's doing, man? The samurai turns around, I assume hand on sword and calls out, who's there? But all he finds is a man bent over, butt naked. But before the surprise samurai could do anything, the man's anus opens up, only to show 
the glittering eye where the anus should be. We're about to hit number one, but before we do guys, hit that like, hit the subscribe button, let me know whatever weird Japanese videos you want to see. Without further ado, number one. Number one is pretty dang strange. It's Kanbari Nudo. This is a weird perverted like yonkai that hides outside of bathrooms on New Year's Eve. It has a priest-like appearance with robes and a priest-style haircut, but it also has thick hair covering the entirety of its body. And one of the weird powers this creature has is to blow a cuckoo out of its mouth. Why? Apparently, the myth of this yonkai can partly be traced back to China, where apparently hearing a cuckoo on New Year's is bad luck. This was somehow mixed in with a Kambari Nudo legend, giving him the ability to blow alive, yes, a living, a live cuckoo out of his mouth. This weird yonkai has a weirder history, but it's said to appear in bathrooms between 1 and 3 a.m. Very punctual, very, very Japanese like, well done, good yonkai. And the only way to stop this weird yonkai from doing weirdness in the bathroom while you're in there is to chant down the toilet, Gambari Nudo, Gambari Nudo, Gambari Nudo, three times. And apparently, that'll stop the yonkai from fucking around with your stuff. There are many different legends about this yonkai, and they differ from region to region, but I think I found the telling that I like the most. And it goes something like this. On New Year's Eve between 1 and 3 a.m., the yonkai may appear in your bathroom. Very punctual, I like it. Keep, 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 to a, keep to a schedule, good good stuff. In entering the bathroom, you must look down your toilet hole and chant Gambara Nudo, Gambara Nudo, Gambara Nudo three times. In chanting this three times, a head will appear from the toilet. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what to do. Spells, magic powers, I've got to zap the thing, right? I've got to do something. No. You take the head out of the toilet, of course, makes perfect sense and you put it into the left sleeve of your kimono. Once you take it out of the left sleeve, the head would have transformed into a koban, an oval-shaped golden coin. Once again, the story changes from region to region. In some regions, the head has to be wrapped in silk and taken to your room, that once in your room, the head transforms into a pile of gold. In other regions, there's no gold. But as you enter the bathroom, you must chant, Gambari Nudo, Gambari Nudo, Gambari Nudo, three times to stop the demon from appearing. In any case, this yonkai is said to be a harbinger of bad luck, so if you're in Japan on New Year's Eve, maybe avoid the bathroom between 1 and 3 a.m. Guys, and that's it for this video. I will see you on the next one. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment. Which demon did you find to be the creepiest? I'm gonna probably say the tofu boy, because eating tofu and dying from mold, that sounds terrifying. But until next time, guys, stay healthy. I'll see you then.